Well, hey, welcome back to another episode of Lakeway Daily, daily encouragement and prayer and focus to help you get through these difficult times. Uh, we're just thankful that you're taking a little bit of time out of your day to be with us, and um, I'm thankful for all of you who are sharing these videos across the social media platform so that other people can be blessed by them as well. One of the things I love about our church and what I love about our faith is that we believe in the power of prayer. We believe that prayer is a lot more than just something we do before a meal or before bed or before going on a road trip, but, but we believe that prayer has power. Um, prayer is our way of communicating with God, both talking to Him and listening to Him. And we believe that God is all-powerful, so when we talk to Him, He listens and He answers. So we know the power of prayer. I would suspect that if you're watching this, you believe in the power of prayer. But I know in my own spiritual disciplines, especially during these difficult times, I've, I've honestly found it difficult to pray. And one of the main reasons for that for me is I heard a preacher say one, one time before that it's like we all have a madman in our attic. Or maybe a mad woman or maybe a whole gang of them up there that, that are always trying to pull at us, distract us away. I know when I bow my head and close my eyes to pray, as I have over the past few days, when I start to pray, it's just like a flood of different requests and, and, and concerns come into my mind. And then I end up chasing down rabbit trails, and when that happens, the worry bubbles up and the anxiety bubbles up, and it just makes it even more difficult to pray. There's an old African proverb that says that when you ride your elephant into a village, if you leave his trunk unoccupied, he's going to destroy everything. His trunk will go into huts and it'll knock places down and he'll be reaching out for all sorts of things and it's going to cause a lot of destruction. So instead, when you ride your elephant through, you've got to give him a stick. You've got to put that stick in his trunk so that he remains occupied. So today what I want us to do in this first episode on prayer, we're going to be doing a lot of these, but on this first episode, I really want to talk about a way to center ourselves, to, to be that stick that can keep our minds occupied and allow us to pray for what I believe God wants us to pray for. So there's a story in, in Luke chapter 11. In verse 1, it says, One day while Jesus was praying in a certain place. So Jesus is off praying. If Jesus prayed, then we should probably pray too. But when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. So this disciple is asking the same question that we're asking today. How are we supposed to pray? And Jesus' answer is a very familiar passage to us. It's called the Lord's Prayer. If you're one of our Roman Catholic brothers and sisters, you would know it as Our Father. And it's a beautiful prayer, and I bet many of us know it by heart. But what I want to encourage you today in this video is to practice expanding that prayer a little bit. To allow that prayer, the Lord's Prayer, to be a guide for your prayer time. So, I want to kind of walk through it and give you an example of what that looks like. So, it begins, Our Father who art in heaven. I love that because it right off the bat, we're starting by reminding ourselves that God is still there. That God is still present. That God is still reigning and ruling even in our uncertain world. So it's a start of a reminder of that, of centering ourselves immediately. God, you are in control. You are still God. You are still who you have always said that you are. And then the very next phrase, hallowed be your name. Hallowed just means holy. This is a time for you to praise God. Uh, maybe you'll say to God the, the hymns of the faith. Maybe you'll just start listing all of his qualities and giving thanks for him. I think it's especially important in crisis times to be reminded of what we can be thankful for, of, of what the goodness of God is, about how he is still great and he is still powerful and he is mighty, and just giving those praises to him. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is kind of the big prayer time. So you've, you've acknowledged that God is still in control. You've given praise to his name. And now you're saying, God, we need this world to look a lot more like heaven. So maybe this means for you in your prayer time, you start thinking about what heaven is like. That there's no pain, that there's no sorrow, that there's no worry, that there's no viruses, that there's no isolation. And start praying through those qualities and then asking God to come make it on earth as it is in heaven. 
And then he even, we were told to transition there to say, your will be done. I, I love praying this prayer. And it's almost kind of silly if you think about it, because this is always going to be answered, because God's will is God's will, and he's going to do it whether or not we ask for it. So if that's the case, then, then why does Jesus tell us to pray this, that God's will will be done? I, I think that be, that's because it helps us to align our will with God's will. If we pray, God, whatever you want to happen, let it happen, then that begins to soothe our hearts a bit. To say, I might not understand it, but it's a part of your will, and help me to, to even if I don't understand it, just persevere through and keep my faith and keep my hope and keep in love with you. During this chunk of the prayer, it's also a great time to pray for the needs of the world. Um, maybe each day you focus on something different. You can focus on uh, the patients who are, are wrestling with the coronavirus. You can pray for the, the medical teams that are working on them. You can give God thanks for those who have recovered. Um, I, I know over the past few days, my specific prayer focus has been for our brothers and sisters um, in the service industry, in, in restaurants and small businesses and hourly workers that um, may be beginning to feel some fear uh, about what their future financially and career-wise look like. Um, if that's you, know that I've been praying for you every day, um, that, that God will open up doors and that he will um, get us through this financial times, um, especially those who are in industries who are most hit. So when you say, God, let it be on earth as it is in heaven, that's what you're praying for. You're praying for the needs of the world, the needs of yourself, the needs of those in our community and our church. And it says, give us this day our daily bread. This is a prayer for daily sustenance. And then a lot of times this just kind of seems like for us modern Western Americans, um, just kind of a throwaway line. Uh, we know that we're going to have food on the table, many of us. We know we're probably going to have a roof over our head in one way or another. But this is a time, especially in a time of scarcity, in a time that we've seen shelves completely bought out, to remind ourselves that we get our sustenance, that we get our daily bread from God. And so asking him, even in times that we don't know where it may come from, that he will provide for us because he is a God of provision. And forgive us our trespasses. Um, I, I, this is still an important part of prayer, even when we have so many other needs to be praying for in the world. To be reminded that we are sinful and that God is holy and that in Christ we are reconciled back to God, but that we still have sins that we need to be repenting for. I, I think now, too, when we're kind of knocked out of our daily rhythms, I know that's when I start to slip into sin really easily. Um, when we have all sorts of things to look at on our phone, we have all sorts of activities to do that maybe we wouldn't do otherwise, it's really easy to slip back into sin. This is a time now for you, for me, to make sure that we're asking forgiveness of our sins, making a list of them even, so that we might be reminded that we are reconciled with God in Christ. The very next word is as. And this has always been the toughest part of the Lord's Prayer for me. Because we're told and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. What that as means is that those two things happen in tandem. That because we have been forgiven of all of our sins, at the same time we need to be forgiving the sins of other people who have sinned against us. Maybe you've got some bridges that need mending. Maybe you've been holding out unforgiveness in your heart. And I'll tell you, this is a time that, that God might open your eyes to that and might encourage you and challenge you to reach out to somebody, give them a phone call and just say, hey, I, I need your forgiveness. Let's talk about it. And it all starts with praying this prayer. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And then lead us not into temptation. Again, there's a lot of temptation in our world. And when we're sitting at home, it's right in front of us. Pray, God, help me to find new rhythms, new patterns that lead to wholesome activities. Lead me not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. This is a time to pray for the cosmic evil that we're seeing even now. Um, the evil of the coronavirus, the evil of all the isolation that people are experiencing. All sorts of evil that, that isn't just cosmic, but that we experience on a day-to-day -day basis. Just to say, God, deliver us from this evil. And then the prayer ends with another reminder uh, of how God is still in control, how the world is still his, how nothing has changed. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You start it by saying, 
God, you are our Father, and you end it by saying, everything is in your power. I encourage you, pray through the Lord's Prayer, but expand it. Use these as bullet points, as sort of the, the thesis of your different paragraph of prayers to keep you focused, to keep it simple, and still be praying what, what Jesus told us to pray. So I'm going to encourage you to do that today. Do that tomorrow, do that the next day, and the next day, and the next day, if you're like me and you struggle sometimes to control that madman that's in the attic. Hey, I hope you'll join us tomorrow for a very special Lakeway Daily. I'm really excited about this one. I'm going to walk you through a day in the life of the Lumpies in social isolation. Um, we're going to show you all different kinds of stuff that we're doing at home. We'll take a walk around the block. Um, I, I hope that it will be a blessing to you just to brighten up your day a little bit. Um, I promise you that if you watch our two daughters for more than 10 seconds, you will laugh uh, and then cry for us. So um, we're going to have a great time. We hope you'll join us back at Lakeway Daily. We thank you so much again for tuning in. Hope y'all stay safe and God bless.